I'm Jake. I'm Holden. I'm Drew. My name's Evan. And we're The Catching, and we're hanging out with Rob from Front Row Live. If I heard the new single on the radio without anybody saying who it was, I would have seriously thought it was a new Green Day song, because your voice cool. reminds me of Billy Joe. Really? Thank you. I've actually gotten that like from a few people. Like Half of them say, no way, it doesn't sound like that at all. And then a lot oh, of them are no. like, oh my god, it sounds just like it. Yeah, no, this song particularly, I was like... Whoa, like this could be, you know. That's awesome. Thank you. Let's talk about this new single that recently dropped. Um, let's let's do it. Oh, that was, that, was a, that was awesome. But tell me about going into the studio and creating the song. Well, we've been working with Matt Squire in uh, D.C., and he's just been a pleasure to work with. He's absolutely, he's just a magical songwriter. He comes up with some great shit that we can use, that we... Uh, we like build off of him really well and for do it all again. It was a very uh, We wouldn't we didn't know what to expect when we were in there. We just kind of uh, went in and started a song from scratch and The melodies Holden came up with some really cool uh, guitar progression and a melody came out and the song just kind of built and uh, Matt told us a really cool story about uh, something that happened to him when he was a kid um, and his his girlfriend's dad didn't particularly like him um, and it in included a, a shotgun but that's some details oh, we don't yeah. need to get into <laughs> anyway it got, it got it escalated very quickly and um, yeah so do it all again was a very spontaneous and fun uh, writing process and, and you guys have experience you guys have been together for the longest time um, so yeah. Going into the studio this time around, like, how do you guys, how has the chemistry gotten better um, when you guys go into a writing session or, or to even just record? Well, we had been on the road for like a half a year, right, like, kind of right before we went into the studio that time. Mm -hmm. And it had been a long time since we recorded any music. So we were really, really excited. We had a lot of ideas on our mind, but we knew that we wanted to start from scratch. So we went in and kind of just like, the vibe was just more exciting. I think we had matured as people yeah. and songwriters and musicians, and it was just really exciting. I think working with Matt was different for us okay. because, like, he was so laid back and chill and right. um, really, like, easy to be around. And, like, we just wrote some awesome stuff with him. Right. And he always brings fruit snacks, which is, like, yeah. a huge yeah. win. For that's the key. You, yeah. you got to bring the fruit, fruit snacks. Fruit snacks and creativity. One thing that surprised me about you guys listening to the music is that Obviously, it was the first time that I heard you guys, but when you hear the songs, it sounds like you guys have been around for a while. You don't sound like a new band that's trying to figure themselves out. Um, and then the thing that surprised me the most was that you guys are so young. Um, so how did, how, I guess like my question is like, how are you guys able to, or what was the learning process of being in a band and being able to create this music today? And you guys sound like you have been established yeah. for quite some time. So the four of us uh, all went to School of Rocks around uh, the area in New Jersey. Okay. So we've all been selectively like playing with each other. So like I was in a show with Holden, he was in with Jake, uh, you know, they were in with Evan at one point. So we've all been playing together since a very young age. So when we all came together, the chemistry was just there. And over the years, recording, recording and, and going on the road, it just really came together on this one. Yep. Our first practice that they auditioned me for, um, we wrote our first song ever and we played it at our first show and it was just like, I don't know, the chemistry has always been there and through the years we've just grown, not even musically, just as like a brotherly, in a brotherly way, like I feel like these guys are like my brothers, like I don't have any brothers but if this, that's probably what it feels like. So well, Evan, I don't have brothers. Evan, <laughs> Evan is still and forever will be the new guy. Yeah. And you will still and forever be the youngest. Yeah. But right. I thought I was the new guy, what, what's up uh, with this? Yeah. I'm the new keyboard player for the catch Oh, right, right. right. I, I have evolved. <laughs> the title has been passed down. <laughs> now, uh, you mentioned how you guys are, you know, becoming brothers and stuff like that. Like, you guys are actually at the point that you guys are moving together to L.A. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is not to say that it wasn't serious before, but it's getting, like, it's the real deal. Yeah. What's well, um, livelihood? I mean, this is what we want more than anything, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. we know that this is the place we need to be. And we kind of just want to live on our own and do it, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's just, yeah, it's time. Right. It's time. Now, what, what's been the difference from back home doing shows over there, uh, doing the Digi Tour that you guys did earlier last year, mm -hmm. and uh, to the shows that are, you guys are doing right now, like those showcases doing here in L.A.? 
Um, so I would say like the the crowds just on Digitour were so like enthusiastic mm -hmm. and like it was it was amazing. And then coming back down to what we're used to is like the local bar, the local scene. It's great. Like getting a taste of both, being on the road, playing like 70 shows, was it? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, just just going from different audiences back to what we're used to and like going back to the roots almost in, in L.A. was, was really cool. Mm -hmm. Really cool. It's, uh, it's definitely helped us grow as musicians. We've gotten our chops together tenfold since mm -hmm. we first started. Right. Like, each show has been uh, a new thing to learn, as something to overcome and mm -hmm. be become better at. So each show has been like a stepping stone, and if, and we're still growing and learning. And we just we want every show to be something we can work on to make the next one better and right. be become great. I mean, we spent years gigging before we ever toured or at all. We were uh, gigging in New Jersey mm -hmm. on the shore, like at bars, dive bars, and. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes the crowds were like 50 plus people and it was really fun and then sometimes it was like one drunk guy standing at the bar just yelling words at us yeah but like every, yeah. every show has value that's kind of what we took away like every show we played on tennis courts like we've learned and then from from that show we learned how to set up our own sound you know what i mean so it's like Every show does have value. So we've played almost 150 at this point as a band over the three and a half years we've been together. Nice. So it's now, pretty cool. Now to touch more on sound, what is it about the sound that you guys are doing today that made you guys all want to get together and create the catching? Hmm. That's a great question. It is a cool That's question. A we never question. gotten asked it. Yeah. I think it, it's like we never like kind of were like, let's do this. It was kind of just like, all right, what hap this is what happens when we get together. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just like... It's just what's on our minds, like any, any of the melodies I write or guitar parts they come up with or any right. like drums that he has, like it's all what we picture in our brains. And I think we all like, for, like it's crazy in my mind, we all have the same song in our head when uh -huh. it's being written. And then it, when it comes that's out, we're all like, yeah, well, that's what we wanted. Yeah, that's <laughs> language. It's like we're, we're communicating without saying anything. Right. We're just communicating through music. And right. it's just like a special bond to, to have yeah. to be able to do that. And um I just think that the the songs that we're writing um, encompass us. Like mm -hmm. we're not trying to be anything else, uh, anything other than us and the catching. Right. You know, we're we're trying to make a brand for ourselves and make our music and put it out there. And it's cool because we we have influences, but I honestly feel like what we make is very honest and it true to us. Right. Inside. It's no yeah. fans. It's the whole there's no right. band that I could really equate to us. Like, I could tell you things we like and we listen to, and you could be like, oh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, you could point out Green Day, right, and just the sound of my voice. Right. Like, there's influences, yeah. but, like... But it's not like you're trying to be no, Green Day or no. you're trying yeah. to be... We want to do something new. Like, we want, we've we always valued um, being, like, unique, being, like, the odd men out, like, doing something that no one else has mm -hmm. done, and we right. want to make that known through our music. But we, we just like writing catchy songs that everyone can sing. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and you guys have been doing a great job with that. That's we don't overthink it. We just like to write catchy songs. <laughs> it just, just comes about, out, yeah. It just it's all about out. like the melodies and then like the sound is kind of a given. We yeah. kind of just are always sounding, like we always have our sound. And I don't even, I can't even put it into words to be honest. Like right. the closest I can get is to say we're a rock band with pop melodies. Okay. That's how mm -hmm. I put it. Rock band a with pop, pop songs. Band. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, I know, but that just gets in a pigeonhole. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You're the catching. You just have to check them out. Are you curious? Check them out. That's what you have to do. Yeah. But going back into the studio, you guys are in the studio right now uh, with we're, Matt Squire, yeah. or you were with Matt Squire. Yeah. We just, we just got back uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Man, what, what are you guys working on right now? Is this, is this cool, cool. Teenage Good Fiction stuff. too? No, there's so part one was just called part one because we had a full album called Teenage Fiction. Okay. It was like 14 songs. And then we decided because we were about to tour, just, we needed new music out. So we dropped the EP of five, the five best on the album, in our opinion, at least. And we uh, said, like, let's call it part one just in case we want to drop the rest and call it part two. Right. But what's next? Uh, I don't know what it'll be called, but there's some good songs. And the last one we just did is our favorite yeah. by far. And, yeah. and what's so different this time around with this new material, especially after releasing the song that's out right now? Maturity. Just yeah, just exactly the maturity, the cohesion on each song. Um, you know, every time these guys get get behind the the board and start recording, yeah. it's it's really just like really coming together. It's awesome. Now you mentioned uh, going into the studio with Matt Squire was, I mean, it just felt natural, but. He's been in the game for quite some time. He's been working with a lot of the biggest names out there today. How did he challenge you guys in the studio? What, what was one of the hardest things to do while creating the new material? Uh, he, <laughs> he would say, like, 
Um, it was never like there. I think the only thing I'm thinking of when I think of like a challenge is like we'd finish a song, uh-huh. but then if we had extra time, he would always say like, "Okay, let's make sure there's something we could do to make it the best it could be." Like he might he'll question a melody or he'll question a lyric. He plays lyric. devil's advocate. A he lot. plays devil's advocate, which yeah. is really good because it leads to some important changes that we made. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, I think it's really essential to just question yourself when it, it comes to writing. Makes us, makes, us think. Yeah, exactly. it makes us think about each part in the song, yeah. like the lyrics especially, like we really analyze. Right. And each part we just look as, like each part is as important as the other. Right. So, so, so has that made you guys change the, your perspective on, on how to create a song? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We Now when we write songs, we think about it and we're like, we, we go into it with, a mindset of how can we make this the best thing we can make and what melodies, what guitar parts, what what rhythmic mm. things can we include. What keys yeah. I'm gonna be adding soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What keys he'll be yeah, watch watch out for him. Um, but each part we just we we've, we've become very focused on the song instead of anything else. We've just been focused on the task at hand and how to make our song the best we can make it. More than anything else, basically. And I think it's funny, like, I don't think, like, he changed our perspective on writing. I just think he added to it. And made it better. Made it better. Yeah, just helped us mature. We, We were maturing already. I just think he gave us that extra push. Right. One of his biggest things was uh, we'd always get like four or five days and it was always like the, the tipping point of can we get two songs like and he would always come in on the third day and be like, look, guys, I know you want to get another one, but we should really focus on this one and make it as great as great as we can. And, and that really gave us some patience in the studio, which is what we needed. So so before you guys went into the studio with him, why did you guys choose him? And, you know, how, how were you guys able to connect with him and, and start? Uh, recording. That's all Tim, our manager, actually. Uh, he's just really friendly with him. They worked on the X Factor together. So okay. when we signed with Tim, he was just like, yeah, I mean, you're a band and you do pop songs, so I'm going to put you with Matt Squire. And well, Matt liked what we had already. Yeah, he did. Like, otherwise, he probably wouldn't have worked with us. <laughs> yeah. No, he did. We were fortunate that he was, like, into us. And yeah. he kind of saw the vision, but he saw it further out. And I remember one of the most incredible things was, I'll never forget this, on our second session with him, we had done two songs in that session. One was acoustic, and one was this, like, funky song. Right. And, uh, and then the session before, we did Do It All Again. So we had three songs with him at that point. This is March. And we were sitting, and he just goes, we have, like, three completely different songs that would go on the same album and I could see this going so far he goes I could just I could see it all happening and like for him who's done the panic at the disco record all time low records Katy Perry 303 I'm just like that meant a lot for us and we're just sitting there like all right good stuff it's an honor really yeah it really was that's incredible I mean you guys are on the right track you guys are you guys know what you're doing um clearly because like I said I heard the first music and you know it sounded like you guys were established so um what moving forward what what's up what's going on with the band like i know you guys have a couple shows here in la um but what's next um so we're basically getting ready to move out here we're gonna be moving out here in january and as soon as we do that man the pedals to the metal we're gonna be working we're gonna be doing interviews we're gonna be recording and uh just getting ready to release new music Try to play a show every weekend. Yeah. We kind of nice. agreed on that. I know it's. I mean, it's easier said than done. Here, here in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right. I gotta start practicing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it. It's just like about the move and preparing for the next year. I mean, we're gonna. We've been working really hard on the new music so mm-hmm. we can uh, start getting into the executive side of music and start to have people pay attention. So that's the next step, and for us, just to move out here. And make it our place. Nice. Yeah. And lastly, for those that haven't heard of the catching, what is the catching all about? We're just four kids that love making music and just want to relate our message and positivity to everybody through our creation. That's what I'll say. Good I know. I words. know that's. I, like that. I know. I know that's a like that's. I could tell you write lyrics. Mouthful, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Bring the band back. Yeah. 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 Bring the that's band what we back. wanted like to that. say. We bring the band. That's, what we, that's our other thing. We want to bring bands back. Can, and can I make a quick correction though? Yeah. Now that I'm part of the band, we are not a boy band. 
Yeah. Very true. Yeah. We're an actual band. Play our own we instruments. We were walking, we to, our, we were walking to our gig at the study uh, two days ago. Yeah. And yeah. On our way there, yeah, in uh, downtown Hollywood, right? Um, West Hollywood. On our way there, they're just like these group of people like walking on the street. We're just like, hey, it's One Direction. Oh, is that in sync? And I was, we were like, we have guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying guitars, but then one guy was like, "They're like the Beatles," and we're like, "Oh, okay, we'll take that." I think I think he just saw guitar cases and thought Beatles.